I'm Louis Cavores, and this is our Art Encounter. Now, this is one of three images. I made these images in 2016. They are works on paper. This is a watercolor paper. It's a nice thick, I think it's 300 pounds, which means it's got a nice heft to it so that it can take the um, ink. These are ink drawings. So all of these are done with pen and um, ink. If you look closely, we can kind of see this actually is brown ink. It might come up and look like black on ink on um, the camera, but actually when you're in real life, it's a kind of sepia and a brown color. When I made this image, I um, made this actually for this lecture. I wanted to do a lecture on realism, expressionism, and formalism. So I decided one of the ways to do that would be to take a different approach to the same exact subject. One, taking an approach using realism, taking the approach using expressionism, and taking the approach using formalism. So here, this is our image of realism so that you can see if we look closely um, this is a figure you know he is in a nice contracted pose here um, it is a male nude and the um, figure is out in the wilderness with mountains and trees and you can see the shading um, as well now every time i look at this i think you know i could actually go back and draw this some more to get even more photorealistic with the subject and th uh, the idea being how closely could i take this to realism so that it looks like what our eye would see so that with the pen and ink i'm able to mimic as closely to real life what the human eye is seeing, seeing a subject in these surroundings. Now, let me show you another image here. So, and maybe what I'll do is I'll put these two next to each other and then we can get closer. So here what I have is expressionism. And you can see that suddenly the world is different. We have um, deeper and darker tones. If I bring this closer, this actually is black ink. So here you can actually, you can probably see the, the contrast between the two inks. One is a kind of sepia brown and the other one is a pure black, ivory black um, image there, yeah. And if we got even closer, you could even see one aspect that I quite like is I like how here you can see how the ink with the pen has actually marred the surface. So there's a kind of almost, um, almost a kind of violent action in the way the pristine perfectness of this surface is creates um, the pattern. So you can see the pen marks, you can see um, and even a deeper part where the, um, the smoothness of the paper is roughened up. Yeah. Now, I call this expressionism because if we look at these, what you'll see is that the mountains still remain, but we've gotten rid of some of the realistic attributes of like here are trees and even the shadows of the mountains um, here. So when we do something like this, an artist might say, as here, I'm just interested in the figure and the context with which the figure is. But here, I'm maybe not as interested in the context, the surroundings, but I really want you to see what this figure is feeling. So I'm amplifying the expression of the piece. So again, realism, then expressionism. Now, if I add a third one, Here, this would be taking this image and even distilling it down to just its formalist attributes. And you can see some differences here. So suddenly, we've gotten rid of, the mountains have even become triangular. And the figure itself, you're just looking at the various shapes that are created with the figure. So we're still seeing a figure and mountains but now we're appreciating it differently. And you can see I've even added another attribute where both this piece and this piece were only one color. 
the black, plus the color of the paper. So brown ink on this wa ivory watercolor paper. This is this black ink on this ivory watercolor paper. But when we get over to here, you suddenly have color. And even when I come in close, you'll see that every different shape is an entirely different color. And again, we've got that kind of fantastic where we can see where the surface has been changed by the pen and the ink. Yeah, so really quite nice. Now, when we get to, someone might ask, why did I do this formalism suddenly with the piece? And you can say, well, here were, perhaps I wanted you to really feel his emotional state. Here, the emotion, we're sort of getting rid of the emotion and we're just seeing the design elements. We're just seeing the shapes and we're seeing them, the shapes and the colors, that world of formalism that, and abstraction that we've talked about. These are all picked pieces that I did in um, 2016. And I, again, I did them so that I could line them up and then we could see the differences between these three pieces. I might show you a better lineup of the three, realism, expressionism, and formalism. Yeah. So again, the exact same subject matter, but treated in an entirely different way. That moves us from one, one realm, the realm of just imitation of what's in the world, to the realm of looking at the expression and the emotion, to the realm of just looking at the forms and the design. Now, again, someone could look at this piece. I tend to like it. Sometimes I think of it as one piece of art, yeah, in three different ways. But most people can look at this and maybe say, my favorite is this, and they'll have a favorite that they choose. And that's um, kind of quite um, interesting and amazing to me because we all have our preferences for what we like in the world and what we want to appreciate in the art world. And if we were buying art or um, having art around us, we might have our preferences of what we like and which approach really speaks to us um, and it communicates to us. So that's our art encounter and we will delve more into these topics of realism, expressionism, and formalism.